in Goya Shares. Good evening. Daniela Senga, good evening. Mayowa, evening. Afolabi Victor, welcome. Adelika Deni, welcome. Darlene Madu, Adeagwa Deni, welcome. Oluwato Yimbidemi, welcome. Varshius Esther, nice to see you. Welcome, everyone. Let's quickly go and be sharing the message under the under the video. You will see your message there. Let's go ahead and share the message, please. Go, go and press the share button. If you press the share button under the video, you'll be able to have a copy of this message. You'll be able to have a copy of this video. So let's go share uh, the video. Let's press the share button, then you'll be able to have a copy. Uh, and this is a message that you want to have a copy of, believe me. You will need to have a copy of this message. Omonike, Afi, Catherine Ehi, GD, Craig, Jake Oke, Elizabeth Ali, Oke Aya Ine, Stella Nuhu, Shigo Wafo, Joseph Oyewale, Anup Shetty, Elizabeth Ali, Tony Ogun, Ogun Wo, Wo Muju, um, Justin Mayo, Anne Marie, Stella Nuhu, Elizabeth Ali. Welcome, everyone. If you have already shared the link, then let's go. Let's go. So, what happens to a child when he is raised up without a value system, without a concrete value system? What happens to a child? when a child grows up without a formed or a formulated value system? What happens to a child when you as a parent did not br bring him up in a value system? What happens to a child or to a human being, to any human being that grows up without a value system? You know, that is catastrophic. Like I said uh, in the morning, I showed you the picture of um, what is what is a value system? Value system acts like an anchor. Value system is the core of a human being. Value system is the core of a human being. It is what holds the body together. It is the core. So if a, if, if, a, if, if parents uh, did, did not raise their children up with a concrete value system, deterioration comes. That child falls apart. Uh, his life is never together. He is never having a guiding light, a lighthouse. He is never having a direction in life. He is never purposeful. He is never goal oriented. He is never gathered. He is never together. He is never really, mm, uh, yeah, he is never really gathered. He is never really gathered. So uh, that's what a value system is. That's what a value system is, what a worldview is. Now, let me show you what happens when there is no core. When the core of a person is absent, when the core of a person is absent, this is what happens. You see, there is no bone. There is no, uh, no spine. When there is no spine, when there is no core, when there is no... Yeah, no vital, you know, no skeleton, no spine. See what happened to her? It's only a bunch of body. It's only a bunch of body. That's what we call it biomass, biological mass. It's only a biological mass, and it's not the body cannot hold that together. She cannot stand, and she just collapses. She collapses under the weight of her own body. Now, what does that mean? When you are not having a core, you are always collapsing under the weight of your own life, under the weight of your own body. What does that mean? That means that you are always overwhelmed with your problems. You are always living for yourself. You are always overwhelmed with your problems, with your issues of life. So a person that is not raised up with a, a concrete value system and a worldview, they grow up 
you know, always consumed and overwhelmed with their own problems. They are always thinking about their issues. They are always thinking about their problems. They are always thinking that, you know, you know, I don't, I don't look uh, nice the way I look, uh, the way they talk to me, or uh, people don't like me, or look at the way that person look at me, look at the way this one look at me, uh, this one didn't greet me, uh, this one think I'm bad, oh, okay, I'm not smart, I'm not wise as that one, oh, I, I'm ashamed, oh, I'm, I'm inferior, or I'm not as slim as the other person is slim, or I'm not as tall as the other person is. They are always overwhelmed with their own realities. It's just like you saw in that picture. They call that person without the value system, I mean, without a core in his body, without a spine, and uh, you know, it, it co the body it just collapsed inside his own body. The weight of your own life, the weight of your ungathered life, the weight of your unstructured life, the weight of your unconcrete life overwhelms you. It overwhelms you so much that you are overwhelmed with your life. But the person that has the 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 the, the core value system, the person that have uh, that has the worldview, the person is standing straight. Is purposeful. He, he, he's, he's purpose oriented. Is goal is goal oriented. He knows what he wants. He stands tall, stands straight. He's not consumed with his own problems. He's not consumed with his own situations, with his own realities. He's not thinking about himself from morning to night. He's always thinking ahead. He's always going ahead because he's strong. He can stand up. He's not tied down with all you know depression from morning to night. Someone that he doesn't have a core value system, the person is always thinking about himself. Where can I get a job? What job can I get? How much salary can I get? When will I marry? Who will marry me? Nobody will marry me. Oh, I'm beautiful. I'm not beautiful. Uh, what school will I go? Uh, what school will I go? Uh, what uh, would I have a good life? Would I have a good? They are overwhelmed and consumed with themselves because they don't have any projection in life. They don't have any you no know, any navigatory system in them because a vision. On the value system is the navigatory system in your life so that you know, you know, it's leading you to, and you have the spine, you have the strength to be able to go to where, towards the direction that you're supposed to go in your own life. But the person that is just, uh, that is just having, you know, body and is having flesh is, is not thinking about going forward. He's only thinking about himself it's because he's, he's collapsed in his own situa situation and realities. So to grow up ch a child or a baby without a value system is even better to not to have grown up that child. It's even better not to have given birth to that child. It, it, because that child will end up bringing more sorrow to you. That child will end up bringing more headache to you. That child will end up bringing more troubles, more, more tragedies to you. You will even regret having given that, to have given birth to that child. But that is not even the whole problem. That is just the beginning of sorrow. Because that child will go beyond giving you problems. That child will become a source of problems. That child will become a source of sorrow to a lot of people in his own world. He will begin to bring sorrow to the relatives. He will begin to bring disgrace to the name of the family. He will begin to bring shame on himself. He will begin to bring shame on his own family. He will begin to bring shame on the country. He will become a burden for the nation. He will become a burden for the country. That's what we, a lot of young people in Nigeria are today. They are a disgrace. They do 419. They do scams. They, they, they bring bad name not just to their families. They bring bad name to themselves. They bring bad name to the whole nation. They, they, they are very existence is costing the nation millions of dollars, billions of dollars. Their very existence is calling the nation its reputation. Their very existence is costing the, the nation. The, everything, everything good is being destroyed around these people. Why? Just because some people call themselves parents and they gave birth to these children and didn't give them value system. When you would decide to de to this when you decide to marry is not worth it marrying if you are not ready to sit, sit down and form and formulate your own worldview about life 
your own value system, the value system that you are already possessed with, the value system that you live by, and the value system that you are ready to transfer to your children. It is not enough for you just to give them food to eat. It is not enough for you just to provide clothes for them to wear. It is not enough for you just to feed their body. You've got to feed their soul. You've got to feed their mind. You've got to feed their intel intellect. You've got to feel, feed their, 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 their spirit. And you've got to help them become a personality. The purpose of <coughs> the purpose of upbringing, the purpose of parenting, is to give birth to personal. Is to raise up personalities, raise up personalities, raise up individuals that are able to inflect, infect the world with their values, that are able to infect and change the world with their values. Now, what are the things that happen to a person that grows up like that without a value system? Yes, the person could be going to school, the person could be smart, it could be a good student, it could be very nice, it could be a good athlete, it could, it could have natural talents. But the person will only be intelligent. The person could even be a Christian, go to church, be a good pastor or a good churchgoer, a good believer. But if he doesn't have a call, if he doesn't have a value system, what happens to him at the end of the day? What happens is those kind of people, they go into the society and they don't have a concrete established position on the truth. These people that grow up without the value system, they never have a concrete foundation of the truth. So the truth to them will always be situational. The truth to them will always be relational. The truth to them will always be either it is like this now because that is the way everybody says. You know, the society will be determining their values. And even when they don't agree with the society, even when they, mm, they, they, they are value system, they, they, their personality and their person conflict with what is happening in their society, what they will do is that, okay, I'm not doing it. I am not doing it. I am not doing it. I'm not stealing. I'm not killing people. I'm not s sleeping around. Or I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. But that is the reality here. People, you know, that's the reality here. They, they, they come to agree with the situation, the status quo, yeah, that's it. They come to agree with the status quo in whatsoever society they see themselves. They agree with the status quo uh, well, about the government, about the issues. They can talk about it, but the reason why they don't agree in their mind, they don't agree in their heart, but in their actions they agree. Now, how do we know that they agree? Because they don't do anything concretely to challenge the status quo. They don't, they don't have the strength. They don't have the spine. They don't have the cord. They don't have the spinal cord. They don't have the energy. They don't have the conviction. Their conviction is not strong enough to make them take a stand and change and alter the status quo. They don't like to confront the status quo. Why? Because their primary concern is about themselves. So they are afraid that when they confront the status quo, that it will have some effect on them. It will have a backlash on them. These people are always afraid of a backlash because they are consumed with themselves. You remember, they don't have that spine. And because they don't have the spine, they, you see, they are buried in their concerns. They are over concerns about their, they are over concerned about themselves, about their body, about their realities. They live in their own reality. They make the, their own safety, their own concern, their own you no know, comfort, their own peace, their own uh, you no know, safety to be above and over God's reality, the reality of the truth, the reality of God, the reality of values, the reality of worldview. So they make their worldview secondary. They make their value system secondary. They put their value system aside so that whatever is happening will not affect them because they are consumed with themselves. They are more concerned about their own safety. They are more concerned about their own comfort. They are more concerned that nothing will touch them than to stand for the truth. But the person who has a spine, but the person that has real spine, that has value system, that has a concrete worldview, he stands tall. If he has that spine, 
is as tall, whatever is happening. He takes a stand, a strong stand for whatever he believes. And he establishes his, his belief system. He does not agree. And he does not allow the tide of the current situation. He does not allow the status quo to overwhelm him, to overwhelm him and to sweep him over. He takes a stand and fights for what he believes. He takes a stand and establishes and uses his own belief system to convince and to, 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 to change the belief system of the, the erroneous value system that are around. Now, for a person of value, he knows that for him to lose his value is to lose himself. That is what Martin Luther King Jr. was saying, that if you don't have something that you are so convinced about as to give your life for it, then you are not alive. You are not living at all. So, because it's a man of value. Only men of value system talk like that. That it is, we, we, there must be some set of value system that you would rather die for than to compromise. Because it's a worldview issue. It's a worldview issue. You know that these things are right and you will never succumb to them or tolerate them or allow it to have preeminence around you. You stand against the things that are wrong. You stand against the things that are, that are not right. The, you, know, you're, you know you have a position because the truth is absolute to you. So that's why it is very important that we raise up our children with definite value system that we have our own worldviews that we are convinced about that we now know you know that we now invest in our children that we now use to raise our children up that is why every father or mother must have that time every day, especially between the age of three and the age of 12, you must have that time, you know, for your children when you invest in them 30 minutes or one hour or 45 minutes or one and a half hours of time that you just invest in them values that you just cultivate. You keep on cultivating in them, grafting into them the core values of your life, the core values of your worldview, and you make them to be people of purpose. You know, I mean, you 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 know, you make sure that they are established in these things while they are still young. It is when they are young, when you establish them in this value system, that they fight for it when they are bigger, and there is no amount of storm that will be able to take them away from it. So, what does that mean? But for people who don't have value systems, who are not raised up with value system, they don't have a solid foundation and they don't have a solid um, standard. They don't have standards. They don't have standards. So everything, so if they are, for example, I see people, I know people in my country, from my country, Nigeria, I'm from Nigeria, and uh, black, I'm a black person, and not just from Nigeria, I see blacks everywhere. They like to talk things like, Oh, uh, I'm the first black person to do that. Or oh, I am the best, I have the best this thing here, maybe business among the black people here. Or oh, I have the best that among the the, 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 the Nigerians here. Or oh, I'm the top Nigerian. So I'm the first Nigerian to do this. I'm the they are always measuring themselves with their equals. Or they are always measuring themselves with people around them or people they, like them of their color. But I think that is a value system, right? There. That's a wrong value. That is the absence of a value system. Because if you have a healthy value system, you know that you should not even be comparing yourself with people who you know with the worst of people or with the average of people or with the with the with the weakest of all people. You should be com comparing yourself to the very best in the world. For personally, there is nothing that I do that anybody will be better than me. Not, it doesn't matter what color they are, what are they Europeans or they are Americans. It's just the, it's my I made myself to be like that. But, but before, before I got the worldview and that value system and I built that into myself, I couldn't even be in the first 10 in my classroom. Among 30 students in my classroom, I was always the last. But that is what value system do, does for you. That is what worldview do for you. By the time you have the right value system, you know that it cannot even happen any other way. So yeah, there is just no way of being the best among Nigerians or the best among blacks. I don't even talk in that sense. You know, you know who you are. You know what you have. 
You know what you can. You are sure of yourself. That is the kind of mentality that we are supposed to bring up in our children. That is the kind of mindset that we are supposed to uh, engraft in them. And that is the kind of mind, because especially we that have so the Bible, especially we have the potential, the foundation for this. But just reading the Bible religiously, uh, this happened, you know, the story of this, the story of this, it's not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not talking religion. You could be going to church, you could be religious, you could have the Bible, but not walk in, in values, not walk in, 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 in the right worldview. So you must be able to sit down and formulate your worldviews. You must be able to sit down and, and, and cultivate those worldviews and be able to know the values that you live for. And those values have to be put into your children. And those values are the things that guide them. They are their compass all through life. They are their light, you no know, guiding light all through life. They become their mission, their goals. They become the things they live for and the things they strive to aspire to, towards. They have a standard and they don't go lower than that standard. So I see, but people who don't have standards, they get satisfied with the fact that, you know, uh, okay, we are doing well, we are not bad. I get a salary, oh, good salary. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm well paid, I'm well paid. Oh, good job, good job. Yeah, 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 not bad a job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, nobody, out of my classmates, out of my classmates, I'm the best, I'm the best, yeah. Oh, nobody in my classmate does so well like me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, people of my age, out of the people of my age, oh, I'm the best. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, good salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there is no standard. There is no standard. But when they have value system that determines a higher standard for them, they know that if God is in them, that is a worldview right there. If God is in you, you are greater than he that is in the world. You don't have any excuse for anybody to be better than you. If God is in you, he that is in you is better than he that is in the world. If you believe in God, he said you shall be the head and not the tail. You are the first and not last. That is a worldview right there. And that kind of worldview must be in that child from the very beginning. So all his life, when he knows that he has to be the best in everything, he doesn't change it for anything. He might not, he might not be the best in the classroom, but he, know, he has to have the mindset. You know, the, 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 the fact is not that you're always taking first, always taking first. In life, it doesn't work out like that. Sometimes you fail. Sometimes you will not take first. Sometimes you will miss some things. Some things will not work together. But the mindset must be there. The worldview has to be there. The worldview still has to be there. Now, let's talk about, please, if you have all not... Um, if you all have not sang, uh, approved, if you have not uh, shared the link to this program, please look under your video, under this video that you are watching right now, you should be able to see a share button. You should be able to see a button there that says to share. So go ahead and share the button. I mean, and press the share button. Then you get a copy of this message and you'll be able to listen to it as many times as you want and your friends will be able to follow you and listen to it as well. Now, so let's talk about another aspect, another reason why this is important for you to raise up your children in, you know, in, you know, with specific value system and to be able to give them the biblical worldview of life, you know, the, the idealistic worldview of life. And uh, uh, the reason why you should do that is because, let's, the, let me talk, I will title this little subtitle, um, on what basis does somebody without value systems, on what basis does he take his decisions? On what basis will your child, will your baby, will your son take on base his decision making process? So it, what, what helps the decision making process of children that grow up without a value system? What is it that will determine your 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 decision making process i mean the other day yesterday actually i was watching i mean we read, going through in, in uh, facebook and i and i had and i read an article there whereby a lady one girl although you know uh, she was telling a story and they are making it a big news in the internet that she's a student in the one of the universities in nigeria and um uh, and so she needed money as a student in the university. So some foreigners, you know, foreigners, 
white white foreigners, unfortunately. Some white Europeans, you know, a lot of white Europeans, you know, they, they don't have God, right? They have lost God long time. And, you know, the things that they, it's not allowed for them to do in Europe, they go and do it in Taiwan, in Th I mean, not Taiwan, in Th Thailand uh, and other places like that, and Africa also. So these people took these girls, all the university students, many of them, few of them, took them to their house where they were living. Uh, and, you know, and what they were doing, they were not even, you know, they were paying them, but they were giving them good money offer and telling them not even to sleep with them. They were not just sleeping with them, but they would bring out their dogs. They had dogs and be forcing and be making these women, those, these students, to be sleeping with the dogs. And... Uh, and, and so one of them became addicted. So that she is the one that was now talking about that story. And But what I think about that story really is that it is a propaganda by some people who are interested in propaganda, propagating uh, perversion in the society. They are the ones pushing it in the newspaper. But even if it's a good story, but I mean, even if it's a true story, I'm sure that that girl, she comes from a family where they taught her well, the, oh no, but they didn't teach her according to, in a systematic way. They didn't teach her in a structured manner. They didn't give her a set of value system. They didn't give her, they didn't build a system into her. So even though she went, she needed money, was she, was she, she was compromised. She was thinking she was going to sleep with boys, I mean with men. But when the men now said, okay, we'll pay you 10 times more, 100 times more, but sleep with my dog, dog. Not, not, not one of them refused. Not one of them re uh, ran away and refused to, to do that. Can you believe it? They, co they compromised because of money. That is what happened. And their fathers and mothers, they will be going to them with church. They will be going to church with them. They are Christians. They will be going to church. They will be in the choir, in the choir practice, in the everywhere. But they, because they don't have Especially when we're there, they're there with white men, with European, they cannot say even no. Then when they have the money on top of it, they couldn't even say no. So, so that, what am I saying? When people are not having, when a value, you know, when a, 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 a value system has not been put in them from the beginning, this is kind of thing that happens. Okay, you say I do Gideon. He say don't judge. Don't judge. <laughs> He's not judging. I'm just using this as an example. I'm using this as an example of what happens to people that grow up without value system. Now, anybody could make mistakes. Anybody could sin. But I'm just telling you of world view. What is the role? This is my topic. The topic of my message. I'm using this as an example that people will be compromised. And when people are saying, don't judge, like you have just said now, you are actually saying where everything goes. That is exactly a manifestation of lack of value system too. That is one of the, the manifestations of lack of value system. When you say don't judge, is that judging? I am not judging the individual. You can only judge individual. But I'm just narrating what happens in, in life. I'm judging the, the, the I'm condemning the uh, the occurrences, the things that happen to people without value system. I'm actually not even judging or condemning. I'm only describing what happens to people without a system of, of, uh, of, of, of value system or worldview? And when you are saying, oh, don't judge it, that is exactly what I'm talking about. That means that you yourself, even though you will not do it, most likely, even though you might not do that, or you might not even, you know, go and practice it, but by saying don't judge, it means that everything goes. It, it means that you don't have a worldview. It means you don't have a worldview. You don't have your own, no, what view? Even if the person who has done that, even that girl, she is supposed to have a world view that says what is right is right and what is no wrong is wrong. Even though I did this, but I still know that it is wrong to do it, and I still know not just know that it is wrong. I it, you must be able to name what is good, what, what is good, and what is bad. We must be able to separate darkness from light. God, that is the way God created the world. He separated darkness from light. Light from darkness. It must be clear. Good and evil must be separated. And there must be a clear debarkation. There must be a clear 
No, the vacation among between good and bad. There must be the vacation between, you know, evil and good, darkness and light. You cannot just say, oh, don't worry, don't judge. Oh, well, okay, it can happen here. Oh, it might not happen there. Oh, don't judge. You don't know what happened. Oh, yeah, yo. When we are finding reasons and we are finding explanation for darkness, we ourselves are part of that darkness. When we are finding explanation for evil, it means that we ourselves are evil. Now, all of us can do evil. All of us can be in involved or engage in dark things or bad things or sinful things. But it is another thing to agree with it. It is another thing to embrace it. You know, we are not embracing it, but we must have a worldview that says, if I did this, if I made this mistake, but this thing is not the way it's supposed to be. So this is one of the things I'm saying, that people who don't have a concrete, established value system, when they fall into situations that they will not be able to take a stand, and the reason why they don't want, want to take a stand most of the time is because they are afraid that they themselves will fall into that, or they will do something as bad, or something worse, and so other people will condemn them. But it doesn't matter if you would do something as bad or, or, or worse, your value system still must remain. Your worldview still must remain. So it is not your conduct that uh, determines your worldview. Your worldview must be based on the truth. And it, 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 it is the truth that's supposed to determine your worldview. It doesn't matter what you do personally or what you fail to do, but the worldview must remain the same. Just like I said about the, about the student, that you might not be the best, but at least you still know that it is the best that you have to be. That it is possible for you to be the best and that you must strive always to be the best. So when you raise up your child or a baby without a value system or without a system of value system, I mean, yeah, without a value system or a worldview, that child will grow up and it doesn't have anchor. It doesn't have anchor to hold him together when things are necessary, when things, when, when in debatable situations. People with worldview, they have their own, no, determined and uh, clear-cut bon, bon, uh, bon, uh, borders and boundaries. They have a clear-cut boundaries. So they, 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 are, they are not debating. They are not swaying. They are not being swayed when it's time for decision. They know how to take decisions. They have ability to take decisions because they have a set of values upon which they base their decisions. So what? let me just say it in a different way. For people who, have, who are raised up with a core of value system, they base all their actions and their decisions in life and their worldview upon that set of values that they have. Their values determine their decisions. Their values determine their actions. Their value system that they have that is, is, that is living and dwelling in them determines their, 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 their reactions and their attitude in life. But those people that don't have a clear core and a set of value system that they were raised up with, they grow up and they are always de deciding, not according to a set of value system, but they take their decisions based on the situation and on circumstances. So if it is the, the, thing, is, the thing that has happened is affecting them, they might be against it. But if it's not affecting them, it goes. Anything goes. Or if the majority of the people that are there, they are for the thing, then they are for it. Then if the majority are against it, then they are against it. If they are in the right company or group of people that is for this thing, then they are for it. If the majority of the people they are in their company say, we, we don't do it, they will not do it. So it is a situational kind of lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that is not based on values. That is not based on, they don't base their decisions on value system, but on circumstances, on situations. That is catastrophic. It means that they are not the same ever. It means that you can never put your hand where they are. You can never know where they are. They don't have a set of truth. Another thing that determines their decision and on what they base their decision is on their feelings. If they feel like this, they just do it. They don't base it on values, but 
they base it on feelings. And decisions are not supposed to be based on feelings, but on value systems. The next problem with these people is that they base their uh, decisions on safety first, on self-preservation, on self-preservation. They want to preserve themselves first. They want to get secure. They want to, you know, they want, they, they want to make sure that they will not have side effect and the, whatever decision they are taking, that it will not affect them or it's going to affect them positively. So if they are going to gain something from me, then they do it. If they are not going to get anything from me, gain anything from me, they say, why should I do it? I don't have anything to gain from it. Can you imagine that during the election of uh, uh, Buhari and uh, Jonathan last two years, I mean, it was last year, last year, um, I was writing articles. Can you believe how many articles I wrote? I wrote 50, 56 or 57 articles I wrote just to convince Nigerians, anybody that will listen to me, why they, we must not vote for Jonathan and why uh, we must have a change. Can you imagine what people were writing me all the time? People were writing me abusive words and calling me names. I said, you don't need to call me names. I'm not calling you names. I'm just presenting my case. You present your case, but they don't have the ability to present cases. People that grew up with a value system, they don't fight intellectually or with logic. They don't bring forth argument. They bring forth emotions. And then, that is not even the most uh, troublesome thing. Many of them began to write and say, we are sure that somebody has paid him, that's me, somebody has paid him to do what he's doing. He cannot be writing, I was writing articles every day and publishing them twice a day. Writing articles every day and publishing them. And somebody was saying, they are paying him, someone is paying him for sure. There is just no way that he could be doing this without somebody paying him. Which reviews a school of thought right there. Which reviews the category of people these people belong to. They are people that are growing up without the value system. They are empty people that are used to doing only things where they have interest. They only do things where they have interest. Where they have self-interest. So it is ego that at the center of their lives. So egocentrism is what determines their decision, not values. So see, these people will say, okay, it's one thing to write one article, two articles, three articles, no four articles, five articles. But how can a human being sit down and write 56 articles and every article maybe about 10 pages? That's like 500 and something articles. I mean, 500 and something pages. How can a human being do that without having self-interest? So they say, oh, they have promised him that he will become a politician. Oh, they want to give him a cabinet in, Ukraine, in Nigeria. Oh, uh, maybe somebody has paid him. Oh, they have bribed him. Because that is, a, that is the cry of a, corrupt value, of a corrupt society. Because the people, the majority of people who are saying that, they are revealing who they are by saying that. By saying that they are saying that it is only they who only do we, things where they are bribed. It means that they are for bribes, bribing, it, for bribery. It means that they will only do things by, 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 by compromising themselves or by self-gain or by self-interest. The same thing they are telling me now with this MMM. Some are saying, oh, you don't have work to do. Oh, go and face your business. Go and face your church. Pastor, you should be researching the Bible. You shouldn't be researching the MMM. Don't write this thing. For, maybe you are having something you to gain. Maybe somebody has paid you. That is showing where people are. It means that we are having a society of people where a, a group of people, a society of people where people are driven by self-interest and self-motive. We are getting, we are not getting used to people being doing things sacrificially just for their ideals. 
We are not used to people doing things sacrificially just for their convictions. We are not used to people doing things sacrificially just because of their values. We are not used to people doing things sacrificially just because of their ideals and their value systems and their principles and their worldviews. Even this thing I'm doing here by coming on every day, twice a day, doing my, this video and teaching you people and equipping you and trying to motivate you people and give you what I know. Some people say, how is he doing this thing without offering? Why is he, how can he be doing this without offering? And people are still trying to find the answer. Where is my gain? Where is my interest? My interest is in the values that I have. My interest is in the worldview that I have. And that's why we must recreate a society of values, value-driven societies. In my own case, it is kingdom-driven. This is my book, Kingdom Driven Life. This kingdom driven life is about the fact that I'm driven by the kingdom. I'm releasing another book now that is going to be called, uh, of, uh, what do they call it? Uh, what's the, the, the name of my book? Um, yeah, I'm releasing another book in a few days' time. If you, if you have not pre ordered your own, you, you might want to go and pre order it. Uh, it's my book for the, my last book for this year. And it's going to be a book that to help you people and to help everybody become a provoked generation. If that's the book, the, the next title I would have called the book. It's, it's to become a provoked generation. A generation of people that are provoked by unrighteousness. But you see, people that don't have value system, they, even if they are provoked, they will only be complaining in their kitchen. They don't have any power to be able to insult by ungodliness. Yes, the book is called Insult insult by ungod insulted is it ins insulted by ungodliness or insult by ungod insulted i think insulted by ungodliness so ungodliness should be insulting us we should be feeling insulted by ungodliness and some people are saying oh face your business what is your if we face your business every evil that is happening in the society in any society is because people are facing their business that is horrible. It's the worst thing that you could do. If you face only your business, it means that you don't have value system. My, the, yeah, my book is called Insulted by Ungodliness. Insulted by Ungodliness. So we should be, with any ungodliness that is happening in our society, you know, we should feel insulted by it. And that's why I'm writing this book. That's why I'm teaching this topic. But some people are no more feeling insulted at all by any kind of ungodliness. Everything goes. In God, ungodliness doesn't insult us anymore. We ourselves all are almost the promoters of ungodliness. I think it is being, it is on sale already. It is on sale already. Uh, how do I show it to you now? Yeah, the book is on, on sale already. I don't know if you can go to my Facebook if it if if they pray pre order or whatever you call it the button is there. You can go and pre order your own. This 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 are the this is about these values that I'm talking to you about, so that you are never comfortable with ungodliness any anyhow around you, and that is the kind of generation of children that we are supposed to raise up. We are supposed to raise up generation of children that are going to, you know, know what is right from what is wrong. That are going to be able to differentiate between, you know, righteousness and ungodliness. Between, you know, light and darkness. Now, when you, another factor is that when you raise up a child without a set of value system or worldview, a concrete worldview, Another thing that happens to that child is, is that that child is only living by himself. He's only living egocentric life. He's only living self-consumed and selfish lifestyle. So he's only directed by his own interest. He's only looking for what is good for him. So those kind of people can sell their fathers. They can sell their mothers. They can sell their country. They can sell anybody around them. They can sell their church, their pastors, anybody. They are only guided by their feelings, by their feelings, by their emotions. 
and by their own self-interest. Another thing that determines the lifestyle of these people is that they only operate by what they see or what they can feel or what they can they are only driven by immediate results or immediate gratification they are only driven by what they see now or what is profitable now or what is what is uh, beneficial now they don't have the ability to look into the future because there is no navigation in them no navigatory system in them they don't have the ability to see far or to look far they are only seeing what they are seeing right now so if anything for them is good now, they are ready to go to cross any border, to cross any line, just because they want to have that immediate gratification. They are driven only by what they see now, or what they can get now, or what is surrounding them now. They don't see far. They don't, because, you know, you know that's what I was saying in the morning, that it's, it's a f philosophical view of life. The philosophical view of life of these people is that it is what I see now that matters. It is what I can gain now that matters. But because that is materialistic, you know, ideology, or philosophical ideology of life, or philosophical understanding of life. I mean, the philosophical, uh, you know, what view of life. The philosophical view of materialism says, it is what is I can gain now that matters. It is what I can see now that matters. Or there is, if anything that is happening determines their reaction. What is happening in the immediate or what they see in the physical is what determines what they do. That, the, that, that worldview, that philosophical worldview is called materialism or materialistic worldview. But the way a human, a normal human being is supposed to live is to live by the idealistic worldview, the idealistic you know, uh, lifestyle, the idealistic worldview which says that even though these pressures are on me right now, but I have a set of values in me. The values are invisible, but they are more valuable to me and they are stronger for me than the gain that I'm going to have right now. The values that I have in me, the belief system that I have in me, even though you cannot see them, you cannot see the profit right now, you cannot see the reward right now, but they are much more stronger for me, more convincing for me. They are stronger for me to take my decision based on that rather than based my decision on something temporal now that will give me temporal satisfaction. Uh, let me explain to you how that helped me through life. When I came to Soviet Union, and Shinwei is here, Shinwei understand what I'm saying now. And maybe some other people that also, I think Daniel Atsenga also studied, knows Russia, so I think he studied here as well. They will, all, all the people who studied here, they know what I'm talking about now. When we came here to study as Russia, as students from, from Nigeria, we were all poor, of course, but there was an opportunity for students to always go to the West and, you know, carry things in, in, you know, just stuff and sell them here and do business that way. So you could travel outside and bring in jeans and so a lot of things that the former Soviet Union didn't have. So we could bring those things, we could bring computers, we could bring uh, station, uh, you know, stereo station and things like that. You know, you could bring all kind of stuff to sell here. But that thing was illegal. That thing was illegal in the Soviet Union. They call it um, speculation. Uh, speculation. It's like you are speculating on the on other people who don't have the advantages that you have. So it was illegal. But a lot of people were doing it. I mean, I know people who were building houses back in Africa, being students here in Russia. They were buying cars, sending cars home as students here. Why? Because they were doing illegal things because everybody was doing it. But I said, no, this will give me immediate satisfaction. It will give me immediate gratification. Yes, but if I do it, I will be compromising my value system. And, you know, if, even people who are listening to me now, if they, if they studied here, they will tell you that it is impossible to live without those things. I will travel, but I will only buy things for myself. And only, but I will not buy anything to sell. I will not sell because I was having a set of values as a Christian. I was born again already, and I didn't want to bring the name of God to disrepute. And I didn't want 
uh, them to catch me and then all scandal and everybody know that I was a Christian. So I wanted to live by the invisible values. Even though, I, even though I was suffering, I was not having all the things that everybody was having. I was not, I was a poor student. I was just sleeping on the bed. They used to call it Lenin's key cravat, the Lenin's bed. Lenin's, uh, you know, just like those hospital beds. That's the kind of... Uh, uh, beds we had like in the hospitals like that's what we had in the dormitory and all our students they used to have fridge bread i mean bed furniture any kind of thing there but i was just living like a poor guy but i knew that if i could persevere but that the invisible values like integrity like faithfulness like hard work like focus like discipline, all these invisible values, even though they were not visible, but I was richer that all those people were building houses in Africa and they were buying cars and having everything. I knew I was richer than them because one day everything visible will come out of invisible. One day, my invisible virtues and qualities that I kept on developing in myself. All those qualities that I was developing, they would give me all those things that those people have, but they would, but that, by that time, most of them might not have those things anymore. Because everything that you have now, if you base your life on the physical things, the physical things are always temporal. Material things, that is the problem of materialism, materialistic worldview. Materialistic worldview is about what is happening. If you base your life upon the physical material things that are happening, they are only temporal. They will disappear one day. The car might have an accident. The car might break down. The house, you know, you might have it, but you might, you might not have money to maintain it. You might need to. Everything material or physical is temporal. If that's what you're basing your life on, and that is what I've seen with a lot of people, it will be temporal. You will lose, you might not even lose those things, but they will not give you. The person that is having his values and base his, his life on the invisible things he is richer. Is the person that is really richer. Because the person might not have anything right now, but if you will continue to persevere, to practice those invisible values, those values will create and they will bring to reality every because we believe it that everything visible now they come out of invisible world. God was invisible. God is still invisible. But from that invisibility, He spoke everything physical into being. So if you base your life on the invisible values of God, if you base your life on the you know you know world view of biblical world view and a set of values that are established in heaven, if you will know that that is your mind say these things are more powerful than everything the world can offer you you will never change them for anything you are established in them because it's a matter of value system you know by the time i finished my university i was praying to god for two thousand dollars that god give me two thousand dollars because i needed to send all my stuff back to africa but you know what god never gave me two thousand dollars by the time i finished my masters i was only have two hundred dollars and $200, I couldn't even, I didn't even know what to, what to go, where to go, what to do. But I thank God he didn't give me that $2,000 as I was. I was fasting, praying, give me $2,000 so that I can pack my stuff as I, as I go home and at least have a, I'll be able to rent a house in Lagos or somewhere. But thank God God didn't give me because God knew his plan for me. God knew his plan for me because I didn't have money. I didn't have money to, I mean, I didn't have, you know, I didn't have anything to take with me. But I had values that I had developed. So what happened, let me give you this example. Because even though I didn't have anything, and God didn't give me that $2,000. So I, didn't, I couldn't even take anything, but I was ready to go to Africa. Just as I was ready to go, in Ukraine here, I, was, I studied in Belarus. In Ukraine here, they were looking for a first class student. And I finished first class. Can you imagine if I had not dedicated myself to excellence? If I had not dedicated myself to striving to be the head and not the tail, to be the first and not the last, if I had not dedicated my 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 no myself to do being the best, if I had been pursuing after the genes and the you know television and and the stereo set that I was living like everybody, I will finish. I will finish maybe second class, second class upper, second class lower, just normal. I will just finish normal like any other person. 
But I will not get that opportunity to move over here and be given the job I was given. You see, I didn't have the temporal, the physical things, but the things I was developing myself, the discipline, the focus, the pursuit, the stamina, the perseverance, the faithfulness, the focus, all those things made me to become the best in the university. And then opportunities always come to people who are ready, who have prepared themselves ahead of time. So when I was about to go to Africa, this opportunity came. They couldn't find anybody who was good in English, good in Russian language, and had his unfinished his, with distinction. So that is how I was moved from Belarus, instead of going to Africa, to Ukraine. They gave me three-bedroom apartment immediately. They gave me official Volga, Volga car, in the 1990s, that's from 1993, Volga, the Volga is like a Mercedes Benz here. It's like almost Rolls Royce of Russia. They gave me that official car with a driver. And I was just coming from the university. And I was getting my salary in US dollars when this economy was collapsing that time. I didn't have anything yesterday. But I was dedicated to developing the virtues. You see, that is the difference, you see. That is what happens when you, you know, see that value system is more valuable than the temporary things people run about. You know, those people that were running about building houses, buying houses there and all that. You know what happened to them? Today, it, in fact, for them to even say they know me, it is their biggest proud in life. It is their biggest, biggest pride in life. People who studied with me in University of Belarus, do a building house and traveling over there. They are doctors, engineers, they are just, but no, they are just normal. You, they are just human beings. They are just human beings walking, going to work. So for them now that we study with Pastor Sunday is their greatest achievement in life, you know. Why? Because value systems, when you can devote your life, living your life according to value systems, they are much more sustainable and they last longer than things that are just, you know, temporary that everybody's running about and now running after. Now, there was another category of people that were studying with us in the university those days as well. And I almost fell into that. My God, God just helped me. Because there were my good friends who were doing this. So, what happened was, I would go to England on holidays, out and to Germany on holidays, and then they would be, and to Holland, and then there would be people there who would discover that we were Christians. And we too, we go and look for Christians. So, we are not smoking, we are not drinking, we are not having boyfriend, girlfriend, or, or, or any of those, we are not selling. And they would say, Oh, since you are a Christian, why should you be living in Soviet Union? Because Soviet Union is uh, a country of uh, atheism and, you know, no God. Why don't you just move over here to, you, to England, to London or England, and let's give you a uh, scholarship to go to Bible school. Or let's give you, you know, we'll help you. You will stay here and struggle and you can go and start your education here. But many people fell into that. Many people actually, and you know, but the difference is that we were not having the comfort of the Western world, but we were having scholarship. All of us that were here at that time, we were people here on scholarship. We were studying on government scholarship. Even though things were tough here, physically we didn't have anything. We didn't have the comfort and the flashy life that people had in the West. But you know, the people that didn't have the, 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 the will, the strong will that was strong enough, they went and moved over to England, to France, to other places, to America, and they started from scratch. But when you go to America and England, no scholarship. So you are supposed to be a medical student, or you are supposed to be an engineer student, or a lawyer, but you are not. You didn't have a scholarship. So they have to go and be working as guardians, or guide, guide, guidance. They have to be working as guard at night. They have to be working as, uh, you know, no security men they have to be going to work in england america and even france like either security men guard and work as uh, cleaners 
and working two, three jobs. And 20 years later, many of them are still working more from morning to night like this. From morning. So instead of them finishing their master's degree in six years, some of them, it took them 10 years, 15 years to be able to even finish master's degree or first degree even. They are just strugglers. They just, why? Because they, they went after what is flashy immediately. What, is, what looks attractive immediately. And that is the temptation that things that attempt, that are flashy, they don't, if you are a person of value, they will not sway you. You know your decision. You know a, a, someone that has value system is a, someone that has a compass. That value system that he has is like a compass in him. That person that has value system is like somebody that has a direction, a, 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 a guiding light, you know, a, a, yeah, a guiding light in front of him. He has like a you no know, navigation system in him. It's not easily lost like that. But, you know, those people who left their scholarship, in fact, as a matter of fact, let me even say this, there was a girl there, eh? He, she was the daughter of, let's say, a governor, governor in, the, in, our, you know, in Nigeria. We have governors. So she was the daughter of one governor. And governor, in our own eyes that time, now is today, I know that governors are just nothing, just some clerks. But in Nigeria, when you were there and when we were students, we were thinking that governors are big men. And some people are still thinking they are big men now, but to me they are no more. They are just they are just clerks now. But anyway, but you know, in Nigeria by Nigerian standard, that's a big man. So this girl came with me to this to, in the same class, and she was so beautiful. I'd never seen at that time, or you know, uh, you know, apart from Shinwe that I'd met at the airport, I'd never seen any other girl. That was so beautiful like that. She was so well taken care of, beautiful, nice. So, but you know what? You know, uh, London, every summer, winter, everywhere. London, America, everywhere. Traveling, visa, not studying hard. Then what happened was, when we got to second year, she said, you know, life here is too difficult. And it was difficult. Life there was difficult in Russia. I said, why should I? I'm going to become a air, an air hostess. I'm going to become an air hostess. I'm going to America. My father is going to send me to America. So she left a scholarship, left the country, and left over, moved back to Nigeria. Because, you know, she said, my father. So when she went, and the father said, what happened? He said, I, got, I, lost, in, I lost interest. I don't want to you know, continue my scholarship. She said, you have stayed there for two years or three years and now you didn't even come back with any diploma, with any certificate. The father got so mad and then there, there had been a military coup <laughs> in the country. The father was no more in the political influential place. Everything that we think, they are temporal. The father had lost his influence and the father was so mad that I thought, I've said to you, I've given you your own destiny. You are having a scholarship. And just say, get out of my house, get out of my house. That girl, a governor's daughter, ended up trading from a state, going to, from a state to Lagos, selling wares, clothes, and children clothes by the roadside. Spying from Lagos to a state, and then she got pregnant, got pre you know, got pregnant to some boys while she was in Moscow on the way home, you know, who was sleeping around, got pregnant, you know. Up to now, when I saw a picture, I was weeping. When I saw the picture of this girl, I was weeping. I was so broken. Because, not, you know, when people don't, that don't have value system, they follow on after temporary, temporary things that they see, temporary comfort, temporary, uh, uh, you know, choices, things that just look nice at the moment. They are not living by the value systems that they're supposed to have. So that's the situation in Nigeria, for example. People are saying, ah, well, mm, because things are difficult, people are allowed to do what they want. Well, they are making the wrong choices that will have effect on them, on their family, and on the society at large. People are saying, oh, people who get involved with crime or deception or Ponzi schemes or pyramids, pyramid, that they are, you know, that they are justified because things are tough. Well, you know, 
There is no justification for what is wrong. And when you say, oh, okay, don't judge them, it's because, uh, they, it's, you know, that is uh, the situation and stuff. It's because you are just like them. You don't have this value, value system. You don't have a, a standard of the truth. So people uh, who don't have value system, they just take decisions based upon whatever they feel at that particular time, based upon whatever they see, based upon their emotions, and based upon whatever anybody convinces them is right. The next thing, the next point, people that don't have value system, a set of value systems, they only orient their lives based on money. Money, which is a physical thing. Money is mammon. Money is idol. Mon money is, is trees and leaves. Leaves become the lord over those kind of people. Leaves have dominion over them. So money becomes their factor. So they begin to take decisions based on the fact that what will I get from it? If you are going to give me something, then I will, I, I, you know, I will do it. So they are servants to money. They are slaves to money. Why do I say slaves? The Bible says in Hebrews, no, in Romans chapter 6 verse 12, to 16, Romans 6, 12 to 16, that to whom you give yourself to in obedience, to that you are a slave. Whatever factor causes you or decides your decision-making process, whatever you give yourself to in obedience, to obey it, whatever you give yourself to in obedience, you are a slave to that thing. Whatever compels you to take decisions, whatever or compels you to obey, whatever motivates you, whatever pushes you to take decisions, you are a slave to that thing. To whom you give yourself. So if it is money that or you always give yourself to, to in obedience, you are a slave to money. If it is money that is the you know, determining factor in your decision-making process, you are captivated and enslaved by money. You don't belong to yourself. You are enslaved and captivated. You have a Lord over you. And that Lord is not God, Almighty God. That Lord, you can go to church, sing as much as you want to sing. You can go to church, you know, you know, do some assault, preach any message you want to preach. But at the end of the day, whatsoever it is that stands as the motivating factor on the decision that you take, and if that is self, it means you are a slave to self. If that is money, it means you are a slave to money. You obey to whatever makes you to obey. Whatever you obey, whatever desires you obey is your Lord. If it is your value system that determines and dictates your decision, it means you are a slave to your value system. And that's the way to live. We are all supposed to be slaves to our worldviews. We are supposed to be slaves to our values. And that's why we must have biblical values, biblical worldviews, so we are slaves to God. Because we are taking decisions based on the standards. So if you, are, if you are taking your decisions based on your emotions, it means it's your emotions that is your God. Not Jesus is your God, but your emotions. It is what you obey that is your Lord. It is what causes you to obey that is your Lord. If it is money, that is your Lord. If it is egocentrism, selfishness, that is your Lord. So that's why we must bring up our children in such a way that they will have such a strong value system that the only basis upon which they take their decisions is those value systems and those godly standards. And those value systems, godly standards, is whom they are slave to. So they are being directed by God. 
and they are slaves to God. That is why they are, when we talk about philosophy, it must be idealistic philosophy worldview. And that's why it's important to have a value system. People who have value systems, they love the truth above their lives. People that have value systems, they exalt values, principles, truth above their own very lives. They know that they could die, but they, live, they will live forever thanks to values and truth. Truth will live forever. They will live forever. But those people who don't have value system, they don't love the truth. They compromise the truth. They play with the truth. The truth is, uh, re, re, uh, you know, relate no relative to them. The truth is just an instrument that they use to promote themselves for their own gain, to have their own gain. The truth is whatever they use to make sure that they serve their interest. But the people that have worldviews or uh, 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 so value systems, they have exalted the truth above themselves. That's why even God has to do that. The, the Bible said God has exalted his word above his name. Even is the truth. The word stands for the truth. The word stands for standards. The word stands for principles. He has exalted value systems, values, principles above even his names. Because you can just come and be calling upon his name left and right. But how are you, who determines your decisions? The truth should determine your decisions. The, your decision-making process should be based on the power the, of the truth that you are submitted to and you are subjected to. You are supposed to subject yourself to the power and the dominion of the truth. So people could say another factor that determines that determines the decisions and that influences the decision making process of people who don't have value is how they are feeling. Oh, I don't feel nice, so I will not do it. <laughs> but when you are a person of value, you know that you must go and you must get the thing done. Think what must be done must be done. It doesn't matter if I feel good or I don't feel good. If what I must be done must be done. Values are more important than what I'm feeling right now. Or if I say they will criticize me. It doesn't matter if they will criticize me. I don't care. As long as I'm establishing the truth. If the purpose is to establish and proclaim righteousness, the truth, the truth must be proclaimed. It doesn't matter what the consequence is to me. Or what the consequence is going to be to me. But for people who don't have value system, it is, the, it is the consequences that makes them to take one decision or the other. If, if, if the consequence is going to be bad, then they, don't, they take the, the wrong decision. If, they, they take the, if they, it's going to be good, they take the other one. But someone of value, he does, he's committed to the principle, to the truth, even at the cost of his own convenience or comfort. This doesn't mean you will not have weaknesses, you will not have failures, but you still committed. You still have your own commitment. Your worldview is still the same. Even when you fail, even when you cannot make it, even when you make mistakes, even when you fail, even when you cannot do it, you fall. Even when you fall, you fall, you get up because you know of your value system. You know your worldview. So you are always just like the compass. The compass can go down, you go to the west, you go to the south, you go to the east, but it comes back to the north. The compass will always come back to the north. Another problem, of course, with people who don't have value system is that they are never really stable. You never know their position. You never know where they are. They always have double faces. Double faces. They are always changing positions. And they are always acting according to their interest.
these people are always under the control of the public opinion as well. Public opinion determines their, their opinion. Public opinion determines what they do or what they don't do. Public opinion, what people will say, how people think about them. In fact, some people... <laughs> Even some people on this platform will refuse to identify with this platform or to even write their name because <laughs> public opinion will not allow them to do that. Because public opinion, they are they are not, they don't have the they don't have the spine. They don't have the moral values, they don't have the compass, they don't have the moral compass. They don't have the value system to hold them, they don't have this the spine. So wherever the wind blows, that is where they blow. Wherever the, you know, the tide goes, that's where they go. No system of values. No supreme system of values. No absolute system of values. And the thing with people like that, that have value system is that they have absolute view of the truth. The truth to them is absolute. It's not maybe today, maybe it's not tomorrow. Today. Maybe tomorrow is like this, the day after tomorrow is like that. They are always establishing the truth. See this photograph. This is the lifestyle of people who don't have value system. So if your child is raised up like without the system of value, it will just be changing faces all the time by the way if you have not shared this video yet let's go ahead and sh share this video let's go ahead and share the video if you have not shared this video it might be helpful for you to have a copy and share the video so go ahead and share the video please let's you know uh, not too many of us have shared the video let's go ahead and share the video Well, I will continue tomorrow. Let me see uh, who we have. Uh, okay, yeah, it's time already, definitely. Let me see what you people are writing. At least Obazi. Now I understand, sir, why some people who are so-called strong Christians expect crime or compro compromise the truth because they commit crime or compromise good because they have no biblical uh, worldviews, principles, no value system. Yeah, they might be Christians, but they are not establishing any value system, so they fail. Anastasia said, when you fail or fall, you pick yourself up, yes, and keep on going according to your value system, yes. Natasha Richard says, powerful, powerful message, Pastor. Me and I and my 16-year-old are sincerely convicted listening to you. Holy, merciful is only the name of God. Our eyes are open and we're repenting right now. Thank you for this honest, honestly painful message from your heart and your mouth from the, the holy, pure heart of God. David Shima, true sons and daughters of the kingdom have his seal of identity. The Lord knows those who are his. It takes discipline to maintain true standards and good value system even at the verge of compromise. See why I say, you have so drilled that into me, Dr. Adelaja, regardless of how I feel, I follow through on decisions because of, because decision is priceless, but because of prayers, decisions and principles. Colin Duncan said, thank you, sir. We need more straightforward teaching like this. Even preachings have been compromised. It's now, no, political correctness. Solomon Aondo, Money Won't Make You Rich by Sunday Adelaja is the best book in my library. 
and I wish everyone in Nigeria will have a copy of that book. Yeah, Money Won't Make You Rich. Is Yeah, this is the book. If you don't have the Money Won't Make You Rich book, this will really bless you. This will really bless you. Uh, Joyce Arrow, in my country here, people that call themselves Christians shit on the government because of money, they will get traditional and church wedding but refuse to get married officially according to the law of the land. So officially, the woman is a single parent so she could receive... Uh, <laughs> She could receive lots of benefits from the government and at the end of the day they pay their ties to the church and so the pastor is quiet and everybody is happy what a shame no integrity no value system i victor imagine we organize one week seminar for all 36 state governors of nigeria like dr adelaja train them on leadership and values value driven system what a country we will have our country will be transformed overnight. Our last sunshine say this is the best I've heard from Pastor Sunday. God bless you, sir. Ngozi Awolesi said, for their own gain or because of money, they remain members of churches and still do things for gain. Yet they said, this is deliverance of the mind, soul, and body and spirit. Thank you. Was best mentor and pace setter. Anastasia said, this is a clarion call for godly value systems. T.Y. said, wow, I'm just speaking in tongues right now. Shioma said, Pastor, it means that Mammon is in charge of all churches in Nigeria then. At this point, at this time, because uh, everything going on in the churches, it's only because of money. It's motivated by money. It means Mammon is actually in control of the churches. And that is why I said one time that the people that I that have my attention in Nigeria now are the people who say they don't go to church again, because <laughs> because you know at least in a lot of churches it just what is going on there is impossible to be able to even compre comprehend them. Lara says it is belly and stomach infrastructure. That's what everybody is concerned with now. Darlene Madu said, though you go with them to buy things, you bought just what you need and they bought what they will sell. Uh, you are focused because you know what you are going after. Oh, you're talking about me when I was a student. Yep. Uh, okay, Ayaine said, this is a true mirror of who we are. I am speaking in tongues right now. Anastasia says, so it is whatever you obey that is your Lord. Yes, that's what the Bible says. It's written there in, color, in uh, Romans. Oh, Okoro, thank you for, so much for this message. I just got delivered. Yet today, uh, you have, have you shared this message yet? For anybody who has not shared the message yet, please kindly go and do it now. Yet today is calling on you to go to share the message. Anastasia, whatever compels, motivates, pushes you in your decision making is your Lord. Yep. Okay, yeah, in a, my God, my God, this is washing like a thoroughly, is a thorough, undiluted word of God. Rochelle White, we just love you, Pastor Sunday. Thank you. Jackie Esther Wilson, yes, Pastor Sunday. Oh, look at your day. Many people justify their wrongs just because other people are also doing the same things. <laughs> truth is truth. It doesn't matter who is doing it or who is not doing it. Yep. Yetunde says, I'm forever grateful to God for bringing you my way, Dr. Delaja. You are just a bomb. She got said, powerful word. Oh, look at her. They said, truth is always absolute, never relative. Many people justify that. Henry King says, your words are just powerful. Glad I found a mentor. Thank you, sir. Your words are just amazing. Ayub Manase, amazing revelation. Wow, my God. 
Afolabi, this is why a valueless president must not lead a country. Yep. Dalim Madu, if you know where you are going, nothing can stop you. Justin says, this is hard talk today. God bless you, Pastor Sunday. Thank you so much for the value system you are cultivating in us. We surely need this free teachings. Joy says, when you find yourself among people without integrity and keep on going with them, you soon realize you become like them. Gift Amos, Doctor Sunday, you learn, you lean, you learn how to work by faith, not by sight. That's why you could stand out to achieve more value system. Now you are now a source of solution to many nations. Gloria Obuokiri, wow, thank you, Pastor. I need to shoot these words over and over again. Esther Kuganja, powerful message. This has changed me. So re-examine my worldview and strengthen them even more. Thank you, sir. Ogenitega, my mindset has been radically changed. Yet today, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Gift Amos, thank you, Dr. Sunday. May God increase you and strengthen you and empower you in Jesus' name. Joseph Oyewale, this message is so timely and very important. This is what is needed in our days where the very fiber of our of our, our is under serious consistent and sustained assault and we need the emergence of a prevailing truth a ray of light to shine in the midst of darkness thanks dr delaja you are a true light shining in darkness okay since i met you my life has completely changed and now understand what it means to be a christian thank you sir gift says thank you for this training center if we on this platform alone could stand out and allow this sound teaching to become flesh in us through we are talking this which we will be able to take our word back thank you Koro pastor it is so bad in nigeria that you can hardly get anything done without giving bribe that's why people refer to it saying if you can beat them you join them Goya Sharis, you have said it absolutely right. Miles Monroe once said that we manifest character when we self-sacrifice for the sake of our principles become more important than compromise for the sake of popularity. Now that statement is even more apparent. You are so spot on. Amy Bobby, thank you, sir. You said it all. So clear and understanding message. Esther Epo. Good to see you back, Pastor. We've missed you all this. Wow. Uh, that was a life-changing time. Yeah, I've been here. Only I've been on another platform. Nkiro Jimadu, I've been so convinced, convinced throughout this week. That's why I've been more quiet, jotted down my plans of deliverance. Yetunde, when you don't know your stand in life, you will e easily be blown away by the winds of life. But when you are firmly rooted and grounded in the moral value system, nothing disturbs your gaze and focus. Anastasia, I never stop admiring the stalwart, godly values of the young men, Daniel, Meshach, Meshach and Abdenego, in their days among the Eden nations. David Shima, you are indeed a blessing to me. Thank you. It was nice meeting you at the Cornerstone Community Church in Singapore, 2007. Wow. Paolo Fashe, thank you, sir. I was missing your messages. Yeah, but I was on. I was just on the other platform. Darlene Madhu, please pray for me in 2017 not to be people please. Oh, only God, only God. Ladi Shorunke, we need to embrace the core truth of what we believe and why we believe. Upon this understanding, our actions need to be guided, guided. Yeah, many face, faces are changing because no good value system 
following whatever that is convenient. Yep. Martin Kwame Ata. Does it mean that if you have peace within concerning decisions and people view are different from it, what should I do? Follow your heart. Ufu Omar, there is so much work to do. Value systems need to be restored and established in our lives. You said it, sir. Life is predictable. We should not be ignorant. No excuse. Deborah Cole, wow. Uh, what would Nigerians begin to do with this kind of world value system? Uh, new world value system, world view value system. You carry uh, Pastor Sunday, you are no doubt a blessing to many generations, even those unborn. Shigo, you have done serious justice to this topic. Eshegon, sir. Oh, Lou Sunshine, this is a message for our generation, a generation without a stable compass of values. Matthew A. Shea, sir, you are always inspirational. God bless you indeed. Oh, Monica, thanks so much, Pastor Sunday, for this teaching. I'm really crying within me. God, please help us. Ademu Mi Lua, Ezekiel, we need more speakers like you, sir, to reinstate our dysfunctional society. More grace, sir. Peter Foley Kujoji. Thanks, Pastor Sunday, that you are able to develop the value system in you, standing for it uncompromisingly. Today, it is turning out to be a blessing we are receiving through you today. God bless you, sir. Okay. Shioma, I said, this is a national transformation message. Modupe Olutun Freshe. How will this great teaching of value system become reality in Nigeria where everyone speaking the truth will be silenced by all possible means? Please advise Pastor Sunday. I have a book here that it says that says uh, only God can save Nigeria. What a myth! This my advice is in this book. It's in Nigeria. If you look at the uh, comments, you will see the comment from Shioma. You will see a name by a name Shioma in the comments. Call her if you are based in Nigeria, and uh, call her up. She has a telephone right here and uh, uh, whatever WhatsApp number is here. So if you write to her or call her. She'll be able to advise you how to get that book on Nigeria, Only God Can Save Nigeria, and the other one also, uh, Nigeria and the Leadership Question. These books will be able to answer those questions. Justin Mayo, thank you, Dr. Adelaja, for this powerful message and your testimony of integrity. It really comforted me. Elizabeth Ali, Pastor, I tell you, I have a word to quantify what is going on in my life right now. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Adelaja. I love you a lot. Gladys Ngosu. I can't wait to, to start from the beginning because I entered late. <laughs> G.D. Craig. Much respect, Dr. Adelaja. My life can never be the same again. Gloria. Uh, okay. Okay, someone on the platform lost his brother, lost his brother and he needs prayer. Kelvin, Kevin, Father, we pray for that Kevin right now and we pray that you will give him a stalwart of strength in this time of crisis and you'll be able to see, show him light despite everything that's going on. Let him see your light at the end of the, of the tunnel to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Solomon says, thank you, Pastor, for your message in H, uh, by H, okay, Asian BS, especially Titus, who is a man in God, has changed my life and mindset radically. I have listened to it over a thousand times. Wow, that is good. I'm going to be back here tomorrow morning. I'm here twice a day, so please, let's continue tomorrow morning.
TY says, I can see everyone turning turning around for Nigeria as this truth takes hold. I mean, turn, everything turning around in Nigeria as this thing takes hold of us and our world. Yetunde, God bless you indeed, Dr. Adelaide, big ox. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a wonderful night rest. We will see you tomorrow morning. I will be back here tomorrow morning and tomorrow evening. But tomorrow morning will be Friday. So we'll be back. God bless. Good night.